So today we're going to take a look at uh, what I think might actually be a first in terms of uh, productionized armor that is sold online, and that is a full set of women's armor. This was made by a company called Lord of Battles. Uh, they are an Indian company, uh, not too dissimilar uh, from uh, Windless in terms of uh, selling kind of medieval themed items. And their armor is designed to kind of be a one size fit all. Uh, so this is not a custom fitted item. This is something that they uh, certainly are making uh, for kind of mass production uh, to sell. And I think there's some interesting points to be made from it, but we'll take a real quick look at the armor itself. Uh, so it's sold piecemeal. Uh, it comes in a couple of uh, different pieces. Uh, the primary piece is the torso armor, or the lower torso armor, and it includes uh, some tassets. Um, the second piece is the uh, uh, upper torso armor, uh, which is the breastplate and backplate. They also sell a gorget, um, as well as two different types of pauldrons. Uh, there's kind of the standard pauldrons and also pauldrons with uh, sword breakers. Uh, and finally, they have um, bracers and greaves. Uh, all of these pieces are made from 20 gauge steel, and uh, they all are you know, fairly well constructed in terms of how they're put together and how the straps work, uh, from what I can tell anyway. Uh, but again, this is kind of a one size fits all, and of course one of the, the big things to do with armor is that you really need it fitted. Um, and so it's not exactly uh, probably the most marketable item. Uh, there are some interesting design choices. Uh, the, the most outstanding one that I notice is uh, specifically here. As you can see, the joint piece between the upper torso armor and the lower torso armor has a very poorly placed gap right at the sternum. And I don't really know why that choice was made or if it just is the way it, it appears to look on this particular model who they took these pictures on. Um, all these pictures were, of course, taken uh, by Cult of Athena. It looks like they have their watermark on it. And I haven't been able to find pictures of this armor really anywhere else. Um, what I find very interesting about this is that this is uh, beginning to fill a niche that uh, is becoming more prominent in uh, this kind of a hobby realm in terms of medieval reenactment and medieval items and that is actually beginning to cater uh, to our female population to all the women out there who are now participating more in uh, what used to be a male dominated activity in terms of wearing armor and fighting with swords and I really think that's actually something pretty awesome uh, it's it's a little bit unfortunate that, that the first we're seeing of this armor seems to be of a, a slightly poor design uh, but I hope this becomes a trend that we begin to see uh, realistic armor, not the silly fantasy armor uh, that we always get to make fun of. Um, and real legitimate armor that actually protects the full body but is designed for women. Now I think what's kind of funny and interesting about this is uh, in doing just some basic research and searching online, uh, I, I found a, a few articles that kind of asked you know what type of armor women wore back in the day and it's kind of a loaded question because really there, there wasn't a lot of women wearing armor and when they did they were likely wearing the same kind of armor that men were wearing and so I think it's a little bit of a, um, a misconception that women couldn't wear armor designed for men although obviously with body shape and certain anatomical features it, it is certainly better to have well-fitted armor um, but again, I, I just wanted to kind of point this out as a spotlight feature because I thought it was really something very interesting and, and I, I'm glad that it's beginning to highlight a trend in, in my uh, field of interest and in, in certainly this hobby in terms of collecting uh, medieval items, paraphernalia, swords, and again still kind of in HEMA that uh, this is not just a male dominated thing anymore and that we're really beginning to see uh, interest being peaked. Uh, with women from all over the world, and that's really cool. Um, so again, I just wanted to highlight this armor. I thought it was neat, thought it was something worth pointing out, uh, and I'd really like to see um, some higher quality armor pieces uh, from maybe more reputable companies, as well as armor pieces that are uh, more, uh, more custom made, but also uh, productionized, so that we can begin to see things uh, that are really drawing women more into this uh, realm of medieval interests. Uh, and so uh, 
open invitation to companies out there to begin uh, making more of these things. I think that they they could likely get more items sold than they would probably uh, initially guess. So kudos to Lord of Battles for uh, making the first attempt at uh, productionized women's armor, uh, something that is not just fantasy. And I, I really hope that we begin to see real functional steel armor designed for women become more of a staple on uh, storefronts and from a lot of the companies out there. And finally, for my female viewers, I would love to know uh, if you've purchased this armor or if you are aware of other productionized armor that is available uh, that you have tried that is more along the lines of functional steel armor instead of fantasy armor and leather armor and those type of things. Uh, so certainly, uh, please comment, let me know. I would love to hear uh, what your thoughts are on this.